everyone. Uh, my name is Megan Kroll, and I work for the Bruce Trail Conservancy, which is the organization that is responsible for the protection and the maintenance of the Bruce Trail. You may have heard of us, uh, but if not, I'm going to tell you a little bit about who we are, what we do as an organization, and then I'm excited and curious to share with you our challenge. Um, and I, I'll say in advance here, our challenge, it seems like a fairly simple problem, but it, I think it's actually quite complex. And I encourage you to think a little bit about it, try and think as creatively as you can. Um, and then if you need some more information about our organization as you're working through that, or if you're just curious and you want to learn more, I encourage you to check out our website and our social media accounts uh, to get a bit more context information. And of course, at any point, if you, if you do wish to contact me, uh, you have my name and uh, I will make sure that you get my email address and you can reach out at any point. So without further ado, I'm gonna get into it and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the great organization that I get to work for every day. So to start off, uh, most charitable, well, all charitable organizations usually have some kind of a mission statement, something they're working towards. And so for us, our mission is preserving a ribbon of wilderness for everyone forever. And when I refer to that ribbon of wilderness, I'm talking about the Bruce Trail, and I'm also talking about the conservation corridor where it runs. Uh, and so I'll tell you a little bit more about that. So the Bruce Trail, we're fairly well known in Ontario. Uh, we run from Niagara Falls all the way up to Tobermory. Uh, and we're actually quite well known across the country, across North America and the world uh, for being a well-developed trail. Uh, we are, like I said, 900 kilometers long, and we identify our trail with white blazes. But we also have 400 kilometers of what we refer to as side trails. So these trails run in connection to the main trail, but they might lead people to special kind of locations, waterfalls, nice views, something a little bit off the beaten path of where we want the main trail to run. And those are marked by blue blazes. Uh, like I said, we're running on the Niagara Escarpment, which is a UNESCO World Biosphere Reserve. Uh, it's very well respected as being a really important critical area for habitat protection, uh, lots of endangered species that call the Niagara Escarpment home. Uh, and thus, we try to protect the area where the Bruce Trail runs. And I refer to something here saying that we're 68% secured. And what I mean by that is the Bruce Trail 68% of it runs on property that's owned by the Bruce Trail or another conservation group or authority, uh, potentially the government, uh, and it's considered protected forever as green space. Uh, but then as well, there's still that 32% that we are trying to shrink that number. Um, and that is land that runs, it, the trail that runs on private property. Um, so just generous landowners that allow us to have the trail running along their property or in some cases, unfortunately, the Bruce Trail is running on the road and we hope to eventually acquire property where we can then move the trail off the road. So I referred to the blazes, that's what they look like. If you've been hiking in Southern Ontario um, at a lot of key areas, you've likely hiked along the main Bruce Trail. History of the Bruce Trail, we were conceptualized in 1960 and uh, actually development started in 1962 and it took them about five years to complete that. And then when the Northern Cairn, which is a large stone monument was established in Tobamori uh, at the end of the trail uh, in 1967, the trail was considered opened. So we've had our 50th anniversary, we're getting, actually we're closer to 55 years now and uh, lots of people have hiked it end to end, and uh, we hope that many more people can enjoy it in the years to come as well. Sometimes people ask me, who's Bruce? <laughs> Bruce, it just refers to the northernmost area of the Niagara Escarpment and the Bruce Trail. Um, so the Bruce Peninsula, which actually is now referred to as the Saugeen Peninsula in recognition of the Saugeen Ojibwe Nation. So the Bruce Trail Conservancy, the place where I work. Uh, we are considered a nonprofit organization, charitable organization. It means that all of the money that we bring in goes right back out to our mission and uh, making sure that we're achieving what we say we're going to achieve. And uh, we're also a land trust. So a land trust is an organization that purchases property for the purpose of protecting it. 
So we are trying to acquire all of the property where the Bruce Trail runs that is currently not considered green space or protected uh, in hopes of the trail being protected for everyone forever. You heard our mission statement. Uh, so we're led by a board of directors of 19. So those are 19 kind of senior volunteers that oversee everything going on in the organization. And then we've got staff, about 22 people that are paid staff that call the Bruce Trail their full-time place of work. We've got about 13,000 members that are currently uh, connected with the Bruce Trail. They pay a membership dues every year. They have a membership card. They get discounts on some of our products and they stay in touch through our magazine. And then we've got about 1,400 volunteers. And actually that's where my job comes into play. I'm the volunteer coordinator and I kind of support and manage that base of volunteers within our organization. So it's very busy, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then I also noted we're funded by donations, foundation grants, membership dues, product sales, sometimes a couple little bits from the government and some other sources as well. Structure of the BTC, the Bruce Trail Conservancy. Uh, our head office where most of our staff work out of in a normal year is located in Dundas, Ontario and Hamilton, although we're all working remote right now. And we've also got nine regional volunteer based clubs all the way along the sections of trail and they do a lot of the kind of nitty gritty maintenance of the trail. Um, so they're just divided up by area, as you can see on that map there. So we've had a really good couple of years at the Bruce Trail. Uh, we had a huge increase in our membership over the last kind of year, year and a half since the pandemic started. Um, people are discovering the Bruce Trail and they're wanting to be involved and stay in touch with us. So they're choosing to be a member, which is really exciting. Uh, lots of people are donating to us now. Uh, we've had a big increase in donations, which gives us more money to then go out and buy those properties and kind of do our job as a land trust in protecting where the Bruce Trail runs. Uh, we actually handle 12,700 acres of land directly where we do all of the preservation and rehabilitation work on. Um, but we've also been a part of protecting over 17,000 acres. So another organization and us have gone in on properties together, um, different groups that are also interested in doing similar things to what we do. The structure of the BTC, uh, basically we have different departments amongst staff uh, that all do different things. This is just a photo from a recent hike that we did in the summer on one of our Bruce Trail owned properties. Uh, so I've highlighted a couple of our departments that I thought you might be interested in hearing about. And the reason I'm telling you about all these two is because a lot of people don't realize, but you can work for an environmental organization and not be an ecologist. I'm not an ecologist. Many of my coworkers are not specialized in plant identification or kind of what you typically think of when you think of somebody who works for the environment. Um, so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of people's jobs and what they do in hopes to kind of inspire you to think outside the box. If, it's, if you're interested in the environment but you don't necessarily picture yourself being an ecologist, there's lots of other ways to be involved. Um, so for example, uh, we have a fund development team and the staff on the fund, de fund development team, their whole role is to kind of bring in those funds at fundraising, those donor dollars to help us achieve our mission. So they're really good people, people, <laughs> they're good communicators, uh, they are friendly, they're good relationship managers, um, and they're organized and they know kind of how to explain to people what we do as an organization and how to want help them want to support us too. That's kind of one area and it's really important to fund the work that we then do in the next department here, which is our land acquisitions team. So we have a small team of staff who their whole job is to really kind of track where the Bruce Trail is running, where we've got it running, look at the properties where the Bruce Trail runs along and try to acquire property as much as we can in order to protect where the Bruce Trail runs. So they're kind of into real estate. Um, again, some landowner relationship management there, some good people skills, good communication skills. Um, and it's a super fast paced job for them, especially right now with the current real estate market. And then once we buy that property, we don't just let it sit. We do everything that we can to rehabilitate it back to its most natural state. So there might be invasive species, um, some endangered species on that property that we want to make sure are being protected and have the best habitat possible to thrive again. Uh, and so that's where our conservation team comes in. 
And that's where you get those people that are your typical environmental organization employees, the ecologists, uh, the specialists who kind of understand those species and the nature of those properties. So uh, a super fun job uh, for those people. Lots of hiking, lots of getting out in the bush. So, And then you've got the organizational resources team that kind of manage all of the different people that interact with the Bruce Trail. So that act is actually where my job falls under. So I'm a volunteer coordinator and I work with all of our volunteers. I kind of provide some leadership to them, make sure that they're doing their jobs, they have the tools that they need, that they're being safe, all of those fun things. So lots of fun. So top of mind with our organization right now, uh, we're really thinking about things like our Indigenous relations and the truth and reconciliation. Um, we are working with some Indigenous partners right now. Uh, we've built quite a strong relationship with them and we're just making sure that the work that we're doing is also aligning in a way that's uh, respectful of those who have come before us too. And um, we've been doing some great things with that. Uh, and if you check out our website, you'll see some of the different things we're working on there. Uh, we're also thinking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, so making sure that us as an organization that gives people access to nature and getting out and hiking, just making sure that we're not creating any barriers to all the different kinds of people that live in Call Ontario home um, and making sure that everybody can access the trail if they wish to get out and hike and they can do so in a safe manner. Um, Something that might be of interest to all of you is that we're actually working on our youth engagement right now. So connecting with young people, uh, hearing their ideas for conservation, their interest in hiking um, and getting them involved with their organization as volunteers. Uh, so that's really exciting. And um, if that's something that interests you, um, I can help you out. You can feel free to contact me. <laughs> um, and lastly, uh, trail hotspots. It's a big topic for us right now. It's a big deal. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that next. So trail hotspots. So it's no surprise that people, when everything shut down, people couldn't travel, they couldn't go to their usual kind of fun spots they like to go to. Uh, people chose to get outside and get into nature. And that's a really positive thing. Hiking and being in nature, being in the forest is really good for your mental health. It's obviously very good for your physical health. Um, and it's a fun kind of opportunity to experience something with your friends and family. So lots of people have been using the trail more than before the pandemic. Um, but over the last year and a half, we've really been finding that it's creating a lot of challenges for us as an organization and in the work that we're doing. So we're seeing really full parking lots and people parking on the road and it gets a bit dangerous and it's overcrowding on the trail. Um, we're seeing people hiking off the trail into really dangerous areas or trespassing onto private property where they shouldn't be hiking. Um, we're seeing a lot of damage, unfortunately, to the natural areas that we're actually working so hard as an organization to protect. So it's really hard to see that. And in a sense that we're creating access for people to go out and then do that to those properties. Um, so all of those things have been really big issues for us, but kind of one of the really major things that's happened from all these people coming out is an increase of litter found all along the Bruce Trail, especially in those hot spots, those really popular areas along the trail. Um, and so I won't say too much on that because I don't want to kind of feed into any potential ideas that you might be having, um, but that's kind of where our challenge comes in for you all. So knowing all of that about our organization, um, and maybe that's got you thinking already, my challenge for you is in a time where more people than ever are hiking on the Bruce Trail, what can the Bruce Trail Conservancy do to reduce the amount of littering and damage that is currently occurring along the trail? So I really want you to think about all the areas where people interact with the Bruce Trail. We have our social media channels like Instagram, Facebook. We have an email list. We use our website. People, of course, interact with us in a big way by just being out on the trail, hiking, seeing our signage. Um, and so it's really important for our miss mission of preservation that people are respecting the environment where the trail runs and using it responsibly. So that's my challenge for you all. I want you to think about it. I'm curious to hear what your solutions are to this issue. Try and think as creatively as you can. And I'll just show this slide again. This is our mission statement. This is what the Bruce Trail Conservancy is trying to do with the Bruce Trail. Um, it's the reason why we try and preserve property, buy land. Um, and so feel free to check out our website. 
check out our social media pages. I've shared them kind of on the slide here. So you can take a screenshot or write them down. Um, and this might help you as you're working on this challenge to have a little more context about us than what I can tell you in 10, 15 minutes here. Um, so I really look forward to hearing about some possible solutions and uh, hopefully we'll talk to you all soon.